Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm nervous. I don't like podiums, I don't like microphones. And, and the truth of the matter is, I feel very emotional whenever I speak about the issues affecting my community because it's personal. You know, what's, for me, what's personal is political. Um, I have a hard time seeing this only in the context of the war on drugs. To me, it's an old war, at least 500 years old. <laughs> Began prior to 1492. It involves imperialism. It involves colonialism. It involves capitalism. Okay? And it's about the systematic oppression of certain groups the destruction of certain groups. And so I feel very, very strongly about it. I work in prisons. I go into prisons pretty much on a weekly basis and work with men who conduct a program. We named it a friend of a friend because that was a passcode on the Underground Railroad. And so, you know, the Underground Railroad, for those of you who don't know, was the mechanism that Africans who were enslaved used to escape slavery, when slavery was the order of the day. It actually still is. It's just simply called the penal system. It's called prisons. You know, people of African descent here in the US, black folks, make up, I think it's like one eighth of the entire world's prison population. Okay, that's not because we out there wilding out like that. Actually, we commit about 15% of the crime in the US. But see, if you look at an urban area where we're the majority, you would think otherwise. But we commit crime generally in proportion to our number in the population. But we make up 50% of the US's prison population. 50, 53 maybe. Okay, to me, you know, it's not about crime, it's not about drugs. The war on drugs is just the, the most recent manifestation <laughs> of this very old war. Okay, it started as a war against the indigenous people, genocide, wipe them out, take their land, bring Africans here to do the work. In some cases, to teach Europeans how to do the work. Okay? Uh, you know, it's old, it's ongoing, and so we have to think broader than that. You know, I feel for the mamas, I'm a mother, and there but for the grace of God, you know, I haven't lost a child, I have four children, but in reality, I have more children than that. You know, and, and the reason being is because I'm responsible for those sons and daughters, and mostly sons in my case, because I work in, a male, in male prisons, whose parents caught that bullet. Whether it was drugs, whether it was HIV, whether it was just succumbing to poverty and oppression. You know, I got out with just surface wounds. I'm a recovering addict. I've been clean for 20 some years or so. Don't even clap. It ain't about that. It's not about that. You know, because it's all too common in our communities, people are getting high for reasons. They're getting high to, to, to escape, you know, the pain of living in an oppressed community. There's a lot of pain in Baltimore. Matter of fact, you know, I look out here and I think about the fact that Baltimore is not here. We got to do a better job. We, we got to do a better job of being where the people are. Okay, it's not about them coming here. It's not about them coming to, to activists and organizers. First of all, if you are an organizer, a significant amount of your time should be spent with the people affected by the issue that you're working on. So check yourself, okay? That's for real, all right? That's part of the problem. They all too often, I hear people giving kudos to the politicians, I don't give a damn about them. They've sat by while children have had to go out and hustle for a living, okay? Because of the poverty in our communities. All right, I like Kurt Smoke. He's a cool guy, for real. But you know what? I'm not going to give up undue props to anybody, especially a prosecutor, okay? Because all of those elements of the system have effectively kept us 
successful or not for 40 years or more. Okay, you look at the 1970s, that's when you saw that boost, you know, in the U.S., the, the prison system becoming actually much more black. Prior to that time, it wasn't majority black or people of African descent. And, and, and on a political and historical level, if you look at the system, there were two periods in this country where you saw that kind of increase in the prison system. Immediately upon the destruction and reconstruction in the South, okay, you saw a growth and increase in U.S. prisons, okay, and immediately upon the destruction of the Black Liberation Movement, liberation movements that, that Native American people were attempting, okay, immediately upon that period and the deindustrialization of cities like Baltimore, you see this increase. You know, black folks, you know, giving Bill Clinton kudos at the Democratic Convention. More of us went to prison under this man than all the baby, baby Bush, his daddy, <laughs> okay, all of them combined. Bill Clinton made Richard Nixon, who was no friend of black folks, look progressive, okay, because when he, the war on drugs, he, there was initially much more money and emphasis on drug treatment. That gradually has dwindled, okay? But, but to me, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than policy, it's bigger than services. It's about holding hands with people in communities, about accompanying mix, okay? Not just talking about these issues and patting ourselves on the backs. It's about being there, being present. It's about providing opportunities for these young people. Everybody that's hustling, first of all, ain't making money. And everybody that's hustling don't necessarily want to do what they're doing. Okay? Our prisons are now filled with 14, 15, 16 year old children. That's a problem. It's a problem of conscience. Okay? It's a big problem of conscience. We can solve many of those problems in our community. Not just simply by putting money or funding or writing grants. Okay? But actually putting like our collective money where our collective, or sometimes really uncollected, mouths are. You know, making more commitment to create opportunity for folks. You know, it, it's, to me it's that simple. It's that simple. That's pretty much all I have to say. Um, just wanna, once again, you know, say that I feel, you know, I can't imagine what you all are going through. But I feel empathy for you, for Javier, for everybody. I feel empathy for the mothers in Baltimore who keep losing their sons and daughters. We're gonna keep on losing until we make some serious commitment to make a change, you know, in the communities that we live in. Thank you.